Hi, I'm Alice from the American Precision Museum and welcome to the museum for our Models and Miniatures virtual exhibit. I hope you enjoy. I'm going to show you some things from our collection that we brought out of storage to, to breathe a little bit and show you something different. And most of the objects that we have out for this temporary display are steam engines. And we're starting right here with a larger one. It's a steam engine with a governor, which is like a speed control up here. This was made in about 1870. And steam engine can also be powered by compressed air. So we do have it currently hooked up to an air compressor and we're gonna run it for you in a few minutes. And that powers a piston, which powers a beam, which powers a wheel, which turns a pulley, which makes the speed control fly out and fly back. We have many models and miniatures, and many of them are steam engines, which are fun to build because they actually can work and have moving parts. And they're made for different reasons. Sometimes they're made for fun. Sometimes they're made to be a sales example. And uh, sometimes they're not so much uh, models as they are just really small. The one we saw a moment ago is just a really small functional steam engine that was probably used in an industrial capacity. But here we have some ones that are models and miniatures. And this whole batch was made by one person, uh, William Hulse, in around the 1950s era. There are different styles because the ones in front here that are red came from a kit. And we know that because of the different uh, uh, stamps and the different materials that are used there. We also have these very, very tiny ones, which are functional. And I can show you these in a moment. And he made these, of course, from scratch because it's fun to make things. What's cool about this one is it has a reversing lever without even stopping it. I can pull a lever and change the gear. Also in our collection, next to all the steam engines are some steam whistles, and we have quite a few of those. The one that I'm holding here is from a tugboat named Annette, and of course, on your tugboat, you would blast your steam whistle so that people would know you were there if it was in case foggy or uh, boaters today honk and wave to each other to say hello. Now this one is actually a five-tone steam whistle from 1900, and you can see that it's got different length pipes at the top much like an organ would have. We're going to play this for you in a moment. Something like this could have been used uh, for a couple of different purposes. They used steam whistles, obviously, in trains. We're very used to the toot-toot sound, but they also used them in factories in the olden days to let people know when there was a shift change. All right, we're going to do something fun here. On this table, we have a couple of different types of model steam engines from various years. The ones up in front are on wooden bases that are probably from before the 1900s. We know this because of the very tiny nails that are used and versus some of the other ones that we have, the more commercially available bases that they're on. Uh, this one is even on acrylic and is from 1984 and the builder dedicated it to his wife. So we think that's pretty nice. So one other interesting thing about these is here's another one that's got a speed control. And I can show you the way that it works is the fly weights fly out as it spins faster and faster. 
And as they do that, they uh, changes the valve speed so that they fly to the right height. Also in our models and miniature machines display, we have this metal shaper from 1963. And it's got a Craftsman generator in the back. And this one's actually functional. I'm gonna turn it on for you in a moment. And you can see how it's shaving um, the very top surface to make it extra flat. This is a process that today we could also do by grinding. So. And you can see the chips coming out here. Over on this table, we have some machines that are not steam engines. And I mentioned at the beginning that there's different reasons to make models and miniatures. These three Gridley turret lathes are an example of models that were taken to court so that somebody could explain to the judge and jury the difference between the three in a patent case. So there's very subtle differences between all three, such as in the gearing and in the shape of the turret. I think it makes sense to bring that to the jury so that they could actually understand the machine that they are looking at. So we also have a few small miniatures by Maxfield Parrish Jr. We know that the Parrishes love to tinker and build things. So here we have a little engine uh, that Parrish made in 1924. It's engraved and even in the engraving it says it never ran well. This one is engraved with 1945. It's actually stamped with letters rather than scribbled on, <laughs> and it doesn't say any such thing. At the time, he was working at the Polaroid Co Corporation and helping to develop the slides um, that send a Polaroid uh, film through the camera. And we know that from the same, uh, from the dating of some of his drawings, that that's the time that he was working on this thing. And also, we've got another little speed control that he built probably just for fun. Okay, over here we have a model scheme power plant by Ernest Nemeth Jr. This is from the 1930s and it's got quite a few uh, moving parts to it. Some of the features that I like are the automatic uh, lubricate over here and this generator here. The engine powers the generator which would then power the light bulb. Some really uh, detailed tiny little hand tools. These were made by Joseph Dennehy. And we've got inside and outside calipers, um, little shears, some jacks, some wrenches, uh, and some, uh, some clamps, as well as a tiny hacksaw. One of the things that we like the most is this tiny little micrometer. Next to it, we've got an extremely tiny steam engine and it was actually made in 1931 and it's engraved in the smallest letters I've ever seen. And next to it is the same model made by someone else a little bit later on. But I put my hand up behind it so you can see how very small this is. And yes, it does have moving parts. I don't think we have a tube small enough to connect to it. So you can imagine the great precision it would take to make something this small. And here we have the Ash Hour steam plant. And most people that have come to the museum have seen this before, and it's really a jewel. It was uh, made by John Ash Hour when he was about 12 years old, excuse me, 14 years old uh, in 1910. And he did this as his apprenticeship. And I believe that he was working in the plant and his boss said, make a model of the plant, get out of here, kid. And so he made a model of the plants that he worked in. Um, it does have working parts. It's not currently set up to be operational, but every, all the belts that are in there would run. We hope the beauty and the precision of these small machines inspires you to come take a look at the larger versions that we have inside the museum. Throughout the winter, we're open by appointment, so give us a call. The museum's not heated, but we welcome you to come check it out, and we'll open for the real season on May 1st.